Namaskar. What's your name? Nikhil. Yes, Nikhil. Okay. So, is it not feeling the self and surrendering the self is same or is it different? The surrendering is almost a decision to be in a state of absolute humility and almost, you can say, obedience to the, to the impulse of that master. Whereas being aware of the master, of the antar guru, is a step before that. You, you know, you become aware and then you surrender. But the mind is basically surrendering, so... Is it not a mental process? Let's for the moment just say that you are surrendering. The mind is... is something we cannot really put our finger on, but you we can put our finger on, because you're right here. So you're Nikhil, that is one of the attributes of you, of this. Another attribute would be your mother's name, because that we are sure of, right? That you came out of her, so... What is her name? Chanda. Chanda. And where were you born? In Rajasthan. Where were you born in Rajasthan? Which place? Ahur. Okay, so Nikhil, son of Chanda from Ahur. He's the one surrendering. He's the one feeling the soul. He's the one. That's it. One can look at it like that too. Rather than say, it is the mind, because then it's a separation, it's creating compartments of... it's dividing you into pieces. So initially you mean to say that we have to start from the... whatever is self or mind, that this particular body or form or whatever it is, it is surrendering to that soul. Yeah. So. It has to be a mental process initially, like we are in So your question is, is it the mind doing that? And if I were to counter you or you were to counter yourself by saying, it doesn't matter if it's the mind or this or that, it's Nikhil doing that. Doesn't really make a big difference because it's the action that counts more than who is doing the action. Right, let's assume that the action is what counts. So Nikhil is asking that question or Nikhil is surrendering or Nikhil is trying to distinguish between the impulse of the soul and the demanding, clamoring voice of the ego. That's what's happening. I personally uh, try to do this method of uh, meditation where we just... the Ramna Maharishi, who am I or... at least I am able to feel that self right now, in the sense I'm able to stay there in that particular state. My real question is that how do we make this permanent? It is, you move into the state of surrender and when the ego tries to interfere, you move back into the state of surrender. When the ego tries to interfere, you move back into the state of surrender. It is a matter of viveka and discernment discerning between where this action is emerging from and every moment. The idea that it is a permanent state is what it is, an idea. Okay. So, your sadhana or your practice is to move into a state of surrender when you feel that ego is rearing its head, the ahankar. Again, you move into a state of surrender. Again, you you are, see, the thing is that the whole, the whole key to this is to be in a state of surrender and not to identify with. I am not Supreme Soul, I am this in a state of surrender to that. That's how the, the experience grows, the Self-realization process grows and deepens and widens like that. There is no permanent experience which is then settled, now it's done, now I'll never fall out into ego. That idea 
is a fallacy, it doesn't exist. It's simply an idea that people like to have, but it doesn't exist. Even the greatest of the greatest of the great rishis and seers and gurus and teachers fall out of it sometimes and they have to bring themselves back into it, which is also why when they are in a samadhi state, in enlightenment states, that is a different story, but the moment they begin to reintegrate into the system, the body is that which they have to deal with. If you move into a surrendered state, then that process of reintegration grows and the process of self-realization deepens and every time the ego rears its head, again the surrender grows and it grows like that. There's no moment at which it's now like this and it's not going to... Okay. So then, what is the ideal life? Like in the sense, whatever mm -hmm. we have been doing, we just continue to do that and just bring this awareness. The ideal, the ideal life or let's say the practice or the sadhana is to be present here and now with your eyes open, not in bliss states, but present here and now. In this present moment, in this state of presentness, you will be in a state of surrender to the truth the truth of the being, the cosmic, supreme, whatever you want to call it. And whenever you move out of this moment, then the, the ego rears its head, right? So then you move back into this moment, into surrender. It is a process that continues lifelong. Whether you are Ramana Maharshi or your Sri Aurobindo or your Ananda Mai Ma or your Ramakrishna Paramahansa or you are any of the gurus or teachers or rishis or anyone. That is why the rishis, the Maharishis, they spoke of a life of tapas charya till the last breath in the body. Why would they do tapas if it's all said and done and then you're sitting there enlightened under a tree? Enlightenment is the start of the journey to the self. Because through enlightenment you experience the cosmos and dissolution of identity then at one point you have to reintegrate into the system because you have to deal with this body, it's not going to leave you in peace. Then you reintegrate and then you find out that while you were enlightened and away, this whole system has lost a little bit of its solidity and its coherence. So you have to make it coherent again. That's what they all did, that's what Ramana Maharshi did, that's what Sri Aurobindo did, that's what Ramakrishna Paramahansa did. They all went through the enlightenment and came back to realize that that's not the answer. Then they had to reintegrate here and be present and start to move in this world and m move into movement from that present moment or in that present moment from the impulse of soul. So, basically what you do is you just start that process, rather than taking that whole circuitous route, you go directly. The future of spirituality will circumvent enlightenment. It will simply move directly into Self-realization. So the child is born, experiences Self-realization, loses it through the socialization and conditioning and then regains it by being present and moving, cleaving its way back to Source. Every time you feel the ego is at play, you bend. And you feel the Master, again it comes back. It's basically if you move yourself into this present moment, it, the ego doesn't have a chance to do anything in this moment. That's the key, you know. It's a growing process. Self-realization is a deepening, growing process. It goes on and on till the last moment that you're in this body. It's not like, oh, now I'm self-realized. It is not something to attain. It is something to grow and grow and grow into and more and more. Isn't that beautiful to think that life is like that? 
it is but then <laughs> during the daily life you know you you tend to bring yourself to this moment yourself. bring yourself to this moment that is the tapas so, not trying to detach from it and saying this is not me getting angry the thing is to bring yourself to this moment and that moment <laughs> yes that is the challenge so now after this situation has happened you realize that oh no i had to be yes. in that state at that moment then this would not not happen actually is it right that it will not happen if we are in that state or it will happen and again we have to come back see the whole idea of of enlightenment and becoming awake and things like that gives this feeling that there are people who reach a state and after that they are enlightened and then they are awake it's not like that these are processes that go on with everyone you name them they've had that process so the same thing is happening with you and the more tapas charya the more tapas you do which is taking your practice seriously and every time you slip out of the present moment bringing yourself back into this moment the more you do that the more you will be in this moment and the more self realized you become okay you sound very unhappy <laughs> <laughs> that it's that simple no <laughs> it cannot be it must be more difficult than that okay so this uh, whole thing arises because you know i see suffering all around am i negative or is it reality that wherever i go i see suffering i see cow suffering on the road or dog or beggars there are some people who will only look at the beautiful things around and i am the one here i'm only looking at the suffering all the time i also feel that i don't want to be that right in the in the in the next birth in the sense the whole concept for me to get enlightened is the goal is to stop this cycle of birth and death i think we are we are you know we should keep it a little bit simple i feel all this birth and death and cycles and it's all too big the whole thing let's try to keep it simple in this moment because when you when you move to this moment then that eternity of everything is with you in this moment mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about births and deaths and cycles and and how to escape them and will i become a cockroach and all that can be left aside for the moment because the experience is now it's here this is the moment where you're living not what happens afterwards when you bring yourself to this moment life simplifies itself down into this this moment you know and you can do this if you want to take up a spiritual path you have to be ready to do some sadhana yes. some practice mm -hmm. you cannot sit back and say kuch nahi ho raha hai you have to take up a practice if the practice is presence it's just being in this moment right now right here what happens is that that a lot of those questions fall away because the experience of this moment is just so powerful yes. because you're just here you're like looking at you see you're right now you're right here basically this moment is what counts now where is all birth and death and cycles and all in this moment it's just the questions have fallen away that's why i want to make this permanent that it is permanent again. it is permanent it is permanent so now i understand that it need not be permanent in the sense it's a constant it's a constant tapas yeah. tapas is the thing that idea that oh now i'll reach enlightenment i'm not going to feel any problems i'll not be reborn again and those birth and death cycles how do you know that there are cycles of birth and death who how do we know that is there anyone who's died and come back to tell us about it but then there are people who are born with certain disabilities or one can give many reasons one can say those are genetic inheritances not from a last life but from a last grandfather i'm saying one can one can do these pirouettes but if you go into this moment if you try to bring yourself to this moment you'll find life is just a television show of the highest order it's just so fascinating i look at her now it's just like i'm looking at her and i'm just like i'm fascinated like wow like that immense fascination of this moment will just 
the questions have dropped away of who am I and where am I and what am I and up and down and life cycles and cockroaches. It's this moment. And when you want to bring permanence into that experience, if that is a goal at all, then it's this moment and then it's again this moment. However enlightened you are, the greatest masters on the planet, whoever they were, are or will be, will have to bring themselves to this moment, else they suffer. And it is never permanent with anyone. There is a projection of permanence sometimes because they have to also, you know, give hope. <coughs> but every single one of them has written somewhere in a side text under, between three lines has written how actually it's not like that. Just think of this, mo this moment is where the entire thing is. The yeah. truth is in this moment. Bring yourself now, bring. And again, and again, yeah. and again, and again, and again, here, and again, and again, and again. And you're present, your eyes are open, you're aware, you're in this moment. and you bring increasing... that is Self-realization, that is the realization of the Soul in action. You keep on doing this tapas, so you're very present, you're doing things, you're not like meditating and spaced out, you're here and now, and you're just aware, and you're aware. So you're, that is surrender, that's what surrender is, it's being present, just in surrender. And there's no... not much else, it's actually a simple thing, you know. It's so simple, that's the thing. And it's... isn't it beautiful? Even if there is suffering, let's say you're there and there's a cow that is bleeding, mm. you come into this moment and then you realize that you, you're direct with that suffering. And so it does not feel like what it would feel if you're not present. It's a different posture. And in understanding. When you go after the satsang, mm -hmm. if you see a situation or somewhere where you see real suffering and animal suffering, mm -hmm. because one sees it a lot, just be, bring yourself to this moment when you are in that, with that suffering and see how different the experience is. Do the experiment. Mm. Okay, thank you.